do you think in the the accident made you more brave in any way more sure of starting yeah. things yeah let's let's put it like this i think my attitude these days is um i've lost i've lost i've lost a lot you get and every day i think that's one of the things that i it sounds very weird i enjoy about having this pain that i still have every day is it just reminds me like when i do get those moments where i pause and there's nothing i do remember that yo life has really changed and don't take it for granted yeah. and when i'm in a really bad state i'm always like you could have lost more yeah you could have lost more yeah. you know like i i, I remember more is like dude i could have lost my leg as well i could have there's so much more that could have happened yeah. you get any dent and since that didn't happen there's a reason you're here hi welcome to the unseen life experience our guest today roy washira brings a unique perspective to the world of non apparent disabilities that is not immediately apparent or visible to others roy hi hello how hi, are you how are you doing <laughs> very good so let's get right into it oh. how do you define your disability uh so different ways i guess me i'm a very humorous spirit eh? so i don't um um i normally call it me i'm i'm called working right hand drive okay because my left hand doesn't work so <clears throat> what do i have i have a i had an accident and i have um severe i had a severe brachial plexus injury a severe brachial plexus injury all right what is that which means that i severed a lot of the nerves which connect my arm to my brain so my arm is still connected to my body but it wasn't connected to like my brain so in short <clears throat> since my nerves had been cut as such um my my hand is on me but my brain and it do not communicate got it yeah so do you mind sharing with us the story of what happened yeah so this was um, july 13th 2013 so it's just 10 years since i've had my accident um lovely day i'd come from i was doing a lot of events for safaricom we'd come from uh nikona safaricom student tour thing that we were doing in Machakos it was a saturday i'd been away from home for maybe a week doing that um got back to nairobi it was really really hot um got on whatsapp you know biker group and i'm like yo anybody want to go for a ride and then guys are like yeah, yeah, yeah let's do this do this do or oh, actually i reached home I was coming to I was I miss my daughter like tons. So I was coming to play with Kaya. And then she was dead asleep. So she, at this time she was like 3 years old, 3 around 3 years older. Dead asleep. So I was like okay, cool. Let me go. We'll just do a quick run and then come back by that time she'll be awake. Watch a movie with her or do something in the evening. So I uh, got onto the group, a uh, friend of mine a bunch of my guys are like yeah yeah we're good uh the sun's out so let's meet up near kembo so one of one of uh, our friends who had been on a bike he'd been on a bike for a while but he hadn't gotten comfortable with it you know so there's people who own bikes so when i mean bikes i mean super bikes right now so they have bikes big bikes or anything but they don't they never take them out so he was one of those guys so he was like He, yeah, every time we'd go for, I'd, we'd hit him up with yeah, come so that he can get more confident to with his riding so he joined us and then I was I think we were five of us um so we did like maybe t- so we would ride from Shanda cut across to Limuru around 19 kilometers and then come back so normally that's what we would do maybe like two runs we'd go back forth and then after that we'd go back to Nairobi just easy um so when we were doing that we finished two 
And then I asked whether we can do a third one. So now Kyunga, so basically I'm just making sure Kyunga can be with us. Because basically between me and him, I mean, us two are there. Um, these other guys, well, they've been riding for 15, 20 years, some of them. So they're really good at it. Um, much faster bikes as well. So, but we went, we would go ahead and then they would pass us. Yeah. So when we were doing that, where, where they, where they passed us was like a corner that I didn't think that he would be able to do. You get. Mm -hmm. So since I'm looking at my side mirror, mm -hmm. I'm trying to slow him down because he's, he's following me. Mm -hmm. So I slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. I'm just dropping gears, dropping gears, dropping gears. These other gears have already passed, they've gone. So as I'm doing that, I'm looking at him. I, I know the road fairly well. So there's, there's a side road. On the road, there's like that little piece of tarmac where people can walk on and mm -hmm. do it. So I know I'm, I'm just basically dropping my speed till I get there. Then uh, we stop. And then we talk about what's been happening, and then we start going again. So as I'm doing that, I didn't really take note son, of what's in front of me. So as I'm dropping, I'm dropping, I think I was maybe at like 30 or 40 kilometers per hour now. And then now I've gone off the regular tarmac. I'm just on the, on like a small strip of tarmac. So there was Kokoto. So uh, what's Kokoto in English? Stones, like small stones, stones pebbles. Yeah. <laughs> So my front tire just caught this pebble, I, I, I guess. So, and you know, I, I'm already in braking position, so I'm holding a brake, yeah? So it locked. And most bikes, when you lose your front... The back. You just go. Okay. Yeah, because it's very hard. Because you only control it from one wheel, so the front tire. Mm -hmm. It's on, it does this. So as soon as it did that, um, I, it slid... So we're basically going in that direction. And then on the side of the road, there was those chumas, the metal barriers, mm -hmm. the S-like ones. Mm -hmm. So basically, I, I, the, as the bike was falling with me on it, I hit. So I hit the barrier with the S-curve on my, the side of my, my body. Um, I remember I just hit it. Uh, now, the next thing I remember, I was facing downwards. My helmet, my this the visor had gone. So I'm looking at tarmac. I'm in pain. And then I can hear Kyunga. <laughs> I can hear Kyunga riding, hooting. He's so confused. Like, he's just hooting the whole time as he's passing me. I, can, I remember just hearing his bike just beep, 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 as he's passing me. Stopping because he was like, what the hell has just happened? Mm -hmm. um, then he stopped his bike. He came. So I'm just like this flat. A lot of pain. Um, oh, yeah. And then he had to switch off my bike. Because mm -hmm. my bike was still running. Mm -hmm. And it's still in gear. You get Because mm -hmm. I've hit, but the bike's still running, still in gear. So he has to come and disengage. Switch off the bike. Come check on me. Uh I'm um, flat. Um, what did he? I think he turned to me. Or, or, yeah, he turned to me. So, luckily, one of the guys we were with is, uh, is Doc, mm -hmm. David Karori. So, he, them, they had gone. So, he, he was busy trying to call them. So, this is in the hills. There's absolutely no network. Like, sometimes, like, it's network is neither here nor there. So we check, we tried calling them, tried calling them. Now, guys passes, passes by, is stopping, guys are stopping, stop. So, Doc, the guys on the other side, they hear the call, they come through. So, he's a neurosurgeon. So, he's like, yo, he got me up, uh, put me in the right position, side checking with me. He's like, yo, dude, I think, I think you have a brachial plexus injury. Me, I don't know what that means. Me, I just know. I, when I turned, my leg wasn't working. This left leg wasn't mm -hmm. working. This I knew I'd hit. I'd, like, because I knew I'd felt the impact. 
and that's what also broke my my visor because I basically went this way. The bike is like what going to 200 kgs with me, and it's basically falling with gravity and a bit of acceleration. So I knew there was impact, so I assumed I broken my collarbone, and I'm probably dislocated my arm. That's why I can't move it. Mm-hmm. So anyway, doc insisted that it's. Now, you know, we're all a bunch of bikers, huh? Yeah. The worst thing for bikers is when an accident happens, especially on a long ride, and there's no car. Mm-hmm. Mm. So we sat there, my tattoos came. He's like, Z, we're not going with that. He's like, Z, we're not going with that. And then, luckily, some friends of mine were driving through, and they had a Subaru station wagon, so they had stopped. So we're like, yo, we're using that. So they popped to the back, uh, laid me flat, um... And then one of the ladies who's, who was in the car held my head like this because now my neck, I knew my neck was, something had happened to my neck. Like that. So she had to hold me in this position for 14 kilometers. And then the best thing is, I mean, the funniest thing is, there's two roads to Nazareth Hospital from where we're at. Nazareth Hospital was the closest hospital? Was the closest okay. hospital at that point. So... Guys chose the road which has maram. Guy, 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 guy. <laughs> Let me tell you, it was mm-hmm. like, you know the story for the princess and the pea? Mm-hmm. And they, she yeah. stacked up all but these mattresses. she could still feel the pea. And she could still feel the pea. Yeah. That was me. Mm-hmm. I could feel every single like piece of maram that we're driving through. Mm-hmm. So we reached Nazareth, um, find out that, oh, they don't even, the ambulance is there, but there's no dairy. So, um, Dere is driver. Oh, driver, driver, <laughs> sorry. No, so, um, they decide, okay, cool. Why don't we do this? So, my dad, my dad, uh, calls, like, yo, I'll just come pick you. We need to rush you to Alakan. So, Doc has already gone. He's gone. He went ahead. So, by the time my folks, my dad came, we did the same thing, lied flat in the, in the back of his car. Guess helped me. Luckily, now the only thing about Nazareth, they gave me a neck brace. And some Panadol, which for sure wasn't doing much for me. Panadol. Yes. Panadol, paracetamol, or something. Yeah. yeah. Just regular pills. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Anyway, rush to, um, so the, the, the rest of the bikers basically rode in front of us, cleared the road. Mm-hmm. My dad became the ambulance. Yeah. We reached, uh, Aga Khan Hospital. Wait, 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 before we get to Aga Khan. Oh. So your dad was called when you were in the fast car? What, what yeah, was that yeah, like, yeah. calling people the, to inform, calling your close mm, family to inform them? What, is, what was that like? Um, I did do it. They picked my phone. Mm-hmm. So I think, I think they, called, they called my wife. Mm-hmm. And my wife called, I don't know. That's, yeah. that's whole section of okay. her. Yeah, so he came. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. He came that way. I, th- I think he came with one of my cousins, or one of my, but they came. Mm-hmm. So cleared the road, reached there. Everybody had been signed, luckily. I'm okay. telling it was a blessing of your dog. Uh, oh, I forgot to mention this. So, as we're waiting, and they try and lift me, I can tell, I've already told Doc, my leg is not working. And now that was one which was bothering me, because, it's right, me I did PTSD. Yeah. And that, it's not working, completely, I can't even feel it. So, as he's waiting, choosing cars, when they lifted me, it just got back to work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, it was mostly my arm okay. that I was dealing with. And I knew I had a lot of pain in my back and my neck. So, so now we're, fast forward when I have a con, mm-hmm. they take me through, uh, I basically have no, I'm not bleeding. I have no physical injury that oh, you can see. None. Yeah. Okay. I have internal bleeding. Uh-huh. Um, they do, I will do x-rays, you do what? So the only thing I find is my collarbone that I'm broken. That's it. Nothing else. The rest is internal bleeding. I think I spent a night there. A night or two. A night or two. That was it. But the doc even then you said, like, yo, we can't see anything else wrong with you. We can't. Like, it's not visible if it's a brachial plexus, yeah. it's a severe one. Uh-huh. Your blood will just clear out. Uh-huh. So, and that will take a lot of fat, we eat, went home, went to work. Then I had a sling. A sling, yeah. 
Um, I had a sling. I go back to the office. I was in a lot of pain. But now they, now the, I did give me some proper painkillers. Um, cause the pain, yeah. the pain, the pain yeah. is, uh, the pain, the pain was on next level behavior. So then describe the process of discovering and understanding your invisible, your invisible disability, um, including any medical diagnosis and treatments. So, um, what happened is we waited three months. So I had to go for this, like, um, I'm so sorry for guys who are like doctors or medical guys when we hear me talking about this. <laughs> Something like, <laughs> this guy know what the hell he was going through. But like me, I'm, this is, so I had to go for this thing where they put like this thing connected to like your nerves, nerve endings, to your head and to my arm to figure out what's up. Um, so we, when we went and we went to my wife, we were at Nairobi Hospital. So the guy, there's somebody else who was there before us. This guy, he was screaming. My guy, this guy was screaming. Me, I was like, wow, 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 wow. I'm going to die. I Me, mean, I'm just going to die. Man. I'm going to die. This guy had screamed. Why? You know, the guy, when he's coming out, he's like being dragged. I think, ah, 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 Test it, test it, test it. You were the first of you. Yeah. And the, the doctor is like, okay, nothing, 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 like nothing completely, nothing. Uh-huh. Like there was my nerves were not connected to my brain. <laughs> oh. So I couldn't feel the pain because it's basically put a charge through your body. So this is the other end. So if it does connect, it, it shows that you yeah, there's a. Those lines have, are working, this is working, this. So that's why I get crying. Uh-huh. But now me, I was basically numb. So, uh-huh. um, well, went back to Oga Khan. Oh. And then the new, the head neurosurgeon was like, yo, Ross, you have, uh, severe complexes. Um, wait, the test was done at the Hospital? No, no, so uh-huh. I just did it. I just, I did Nairobi. I did that test in Norway Hospital uh-huh. just because they have the equipment. Oh, there's somebody who specializes okay. who's just there. <clears throat> but then you went back to another yeah. one. Yeah, so we're in the doctors in for the clinic. Uh-huh. Um, so he was like, yo, there's nothing much more we can do here because uh-huh. severe breaker practice is not something that's operated here in Kenya. Uh-huh. So now we started the search of trying to figure out where we can because uh, once you had the accident, you had like six months to sort of sort out the nerves before they die, before okay. the nerve endings die. Okay. Uh, so we started looking for options. Uh, we looked at India, and uh, one of those days I was just like, "No, you what? My bike was at the party. Mm-hmm. I mean, how many guys in Italy ride bikes? Yeah. My scooter was Italian. My bike was Italian. Uh-huh. So I think we start looking for." Italian site as well. Uh-huh. So I just started checking, checking. <clears throat> then I found, found this doctor called Pibato. Uh, reach out to him. I had to do Google Translate because it was all Italian. Uh-huh. Google Translate. Uh, then I reached out to him, told him the story. He's like, yo, come through. This was in, so this was July. I had been given the um, feedback in September there. By October, uh-huh. so what we decided, we just went to visit him. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. what happened is we asked the guys also in India, the guys in Italy, and cost difference wasn't that crazy. And even when we went to see him, so I mean, we were just more comfortable with going to see this guy, going to see him. Uh, he had actually come to Kenya. He was in Kenya some years before he came to do surgery on babies. Oh. So he did this for free for two weeks uh-huh. at Kenyatta National Hospital. Uh-huh. And so the only there's like two ways, three ways that you get the kind of injury I have. Was a accident, which is a primary of vehicular. <coughs> primary source is motorcycles. Second source is uh, kids who are being given birth. When they're being thrown out in the womb, 
safety cables. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you find that later is when people realize that mm-hmm. something something is wrong with the kid. Yeah. The hands are moving. Yeah. When they're being pulled, pushed too hard, cracks their other knees, mm-hmm. and else. So they also get a break in process. Mm-hmm. Three, when you fall off a tree. Wow. Because you always come down with your head. Mm-hmm. You turn your hands, you yeah. put your head, mm-hmm. spread this part, <coughs> and it's kind of cut. Mm-hmm. So this guy had actually come to do, they did what? They did surgery on around 400 kids. Wow. At KNH who had brachioplexus brick- injury. Mm-hmm. So for that, after that, you know, his case was sold. Uh, okay. We were like, yeah, this, this is going to be the guy we're with. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> I had to go back in before July because he was like, okay, no, we have a year to play. Yeah. Uh, and he basically, he's done, like you go into this guy's office, it's just like athletes. Mm. like so many like he's just like celebs on the wall you're just like what mm-hmm. what is going on because mm-hmm. he's like he's a well like this guy he there was he's so well trained and it's passed on like in italy like they pass this on to the next generation yeah so, yeah so <clears throat> how many months after the accident did you end up having the surgery uh surgery was uh in june mm-hmm. I, uh, no it was in march i had to go back i went back in march um, then we had my first surgery, which involved <clears throat> basically removing nerves that I don't need from my leg, from my ribs, and transferring them to this area, because this is where I had the most damage. Um, um, yeah, it, was, it, was a, it wasn't a long surgery. Um, it's, it's just what they were doing, because basically there's a nerve from here, to the center of your leg, just here, mm-hmm. okay, mm-hmm. which does nothing, yeah, other than just feeling, feeling mm-hmm. that part of your leg. Mm-hmm. So they, he basically cut it, and then tied it like a shoelace from my mugu. Wow, <laughs> so quite literally. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I have like so I have cuts like every mm-hmm. three inches. Mm-hmm. So because he'd have to pull it, pull it. So what happened is when after the surgery, like my leg. I couldn't feel the center when I step, mm-hmm. but eventually it's like the other nerves have just balanced out. Mm-hmm. So now I still feel it. Mm-hmm. So they cut that and they use that too. Yeah. Like, yeah. And then my ribs mm-hmm. on this side, mm-hmm. they removed a lot of nerves in between my ribs and then they used those. <clears throat> um, yeah. So you said that was your first surgery. That's How surgery. many surgeries did you have in total and what were the results? Two so I've had two surgeries so far. Mm-hmm. The second one that I went for was, so the thing with the arm, with the kind of injury I have, this is one of the hardest things. You find that this nerve that allows you to just do this is <clears throat> it's very hard to replace. Mm-hmm. So what they prefer to do, so even my doc was like, Roy, would you rather have, would you rather be able to hold something? Mm-hmm. Or would you rather hold it like this? Mm-hmm. Because you can't lift your arm. Mm-hmm. Get yeah. So what they did is, <clears throat> so I have a plate from here mm-hmm. till here, mm-hmm. which is just straight. Okay. So my hand can't flex. This one, this hand can't flex, so I don't have a drop. Before you mm-hmm. saw a drop. Now I don't have a drop anymore. So I have a plate from here to here. So I don't have a drop, but I can't. F- this can't fold. Okay. So then when eventually if my fingers do come back, mm-hmm. then I'll be able to hold things straight. Mm-hmm. You, there's a lot more you can do straight than you can do. Yeah. Like this. So like even writing and picking up things. Yeah. So what percentage of mobility would you say you have on your hand now? Now, um, from then, <clears throat> I had years of zero mobility. Mm-hmm. And then now I can do this. I can... Actually, so the only thing I don't have right now is my fingers. Mm-hmm. My fingers don't work. On okay. The side of my okay. Own, they don't work completely. Mm-hmm. So I can do this. I can stretch out for stuff. Yeah. I still can't, like, decide to put my hand in. I still have to sleeve it in. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but beyond that, mm-hmm. it's my fingers which don't work. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I think when those come back, I'll be back to doing a lot. Okay, yeah. so is it a given that it's going to come back? No, 
Okay. Yeah. So it's not a given. Mm -hmm. um, so the interesting thing is, it could have even come back. Yeah. But I don't know how to control it. Because remember, they use Your different brain. nerves mm -hmm. from different places. Mm -hmm. So my brain still hasn't figured out how to reach okay. that part. Okay. Okay. Or something. Yeah. So, yeah. And do you currently do physiotherapy or anything to try and get it? Uh, so I do. Mm -hmm. I do some physio. Not as passionate or as um, I used to do from the get-go. Because mm -hmm. my doc was also quite clear. Yeah. Mine is nerves. Mm -hmm. If your nerves don't come back, yeah. you can work that thing all you want. Mm. Good. Yeah. So I focus mostly because I still have... So I have numerous injuries. I didn't mm -hmm. want. So <clears throat> during the accident, I had like one of my vertebrae came out. So that's, I have constant back pain. Okay. So my back pain is crazy. Yeah. Like I just, temperature change affects me like crazy. Yeah. As well as the plate in the hand. The Yeah. Mm -hmm. The plate does, but I think the plate more than, let's say, hey, my spine affects me. Okay. Oh, sometimes, yeah. And, and, I, and the whole thing about, because I end up, I'm technically carrying my arm. Mm -hmm. So my body is swayed. This way. Mm. Good. Yeah. So as much as I'll put it in my my pocket, I'm still sleeping. I sleeping is hard. Till now? Yeah. Every single night? Yeah. Wow. Sleeping and I like I can tell you, you can mm. blindfold me. Yeah. And tell you when the sun has gone down. Wow. So I'm sure one thing that you realize is the type of painkillers for nerves is like this. I know there's one called Gabanav. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's different types of pain. So yeah. you're taking painkillers specifically for the nerve? I used to. Uh -huh. don't you don't take anymore. Mm. What about medication to help you sleep? I used to. Mm -hmm. Let's just put it like this. Me, I was like, I reached a point in my life. I was like, boss, I'm not going to let this thing control me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I, I found that you guy, my whole week, ah, you have to go see the... So, so, gee, this guy, you have to go get meds. Meds are expensive. Yeah. Meds are so expensive. Like, yeah. So expensive. My doc was always like, because I'll tell you this, before mm -hmm. before my accident, I never used to drink mm -hmm. my entire life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So after my accident, even my doc was like, yo, dude, a car whiskey shot is much better than a then it's cheaper than, than even taking some of these meds. It won't, it'll probably do you... So what you find, like, the days I don't end up in pain mm -hmm. is the days I actually just... Either I'm watching TV on a couch and then it's blackout. Mm -hmm. When I go to bed, yeah, it's like a 30, 20, 30 minutes of just, like, your pain. Wow. Just pain, 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 pain. Yeah. You know, sometimes when you sit down, as, as soon as... I've changed position for my back. Mm -hmm. It's pain. Yeah. I'm so sorry you're going through that. Mm. And what did support look like then? And what does support look like now? I think, like I said, it reached a point where I was just like, yo, I'm not going to let this thing. So yeah. support for me, um, what does it look like? Wow. Because I'm sure like mm. after the accident, you mm. had to have someone taking care of you yes. because you couldn't move. A lot. Yeah, I couldn't move a mm -hmm. lot, but then at the same time, so like my wife took care of me. Yeah. My my daughter. Um, but I also kind of so my previous I had an accident before this. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> which, um, which is on YouTube, weirdly enough. The so, accident. Yes. I won't ask why. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I had my GoPro on. Ah, okay. So it's it's actually on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Um, but basically, I fractured this hand mm -hmm. all the way to the center. 
Mm-hmm. So for like three, four months, I couldn't use his arm. Mm-hmm. Which I think, I don't know if God was just like preparing me, but I got used to. I switched so quickly. I'm not left-handed. Mm-hmm. I switched so quickly. I continued. Uh, like I said, uh, we didn't talk, my previous life, I was a photographer. I, was just, I did everything. With just one hand, mm-hmm. this hand. Mm-hmm. So when this happened, I kind of had like a few days. And then, oh, sorry, one of the weirdest things about my accident. The is, first one or the second one? Oh, the second one. Okay. This main one. Yeah. This one was just a fracture. Mm-hmm. So it, it healed after three, four months. Okay. But I, I was forced to use entirely my mm-hmm. left arm. Mm-hmm. Mm, the thing about this particular injury, one of the things that I really hate is it still happens still now is a lot of times i'll be asleep or i'll just be lying down and i can't tell where my hand is completely you like can't, can't tell, tell where it I is, tell where it is. Mm-hmm. like i'll either have to ask somebody like if i'm sleeping maybe with my wife mm-hmm. be like yo where's my hand is it just look for it it's on my body mm-hmm. it's attached but it's called like phantom like these phantom things are crazy mm-hmm. like that's one thing like from day one yeah. to now, mm-hmm. which still affects where you like, you can't feel where your hand is. Mm-hmm. You could be sat on it flat. Yeah. You're sitting on it completely and you don't know. And let's just talk about um, mm-hmm. mentally, mm-hmm. Um, how, mentally and emotionally. Mm-hmm. How did that affect you? And what has that recovery been like? Um, I think... Mentally, I mean, uh, there's some things I'm very sad that I can't do. Riding bikes. Uh, I was a, I'm a big motorsports fan. So um, that photography, very hands-on. I, I'm a, I build things by myself. I'm very used to being hands-on. But now a lot of things I couldn't do. Yeah. I had to accept that. Mm-hmm. Um, I always say, so mental-wise, I had to change how I, I think a lot and these days i use more of my before i used to use my brain and be physical mm-hmm. but because i could do things by myself if i couldn't get other people to help me do something it didn't matter to me i'll just do it by myself mm-hmm. but now i'm put in a position where yeah you can have the idea you can have um a way of doing something but then you have to rely on others mm-hmm. and you have to learn how to educate them teach them, nurture them yeah. into getting into. Because before, all, all my previous businesses before that, mm-hmm. I was alone. I d- it didn't matter to me. I was a DJ before. Mm-hmm. I was a photographer by myself before. I was, I was, it was me. Yeah. Yeah. So I had to change quite a lot of things. Now I have a whole team with me. It, it had, weirdly, it started after my first, before my first accident. Mm-hmm. And then it just progressed. I just started getting into it yeah so mentally i think that's one of the biggest challenges i've had Mm -hmm. but it was it was as it was as because you get frustrated when like i do a lot of woodwork i do a lot of like metal work Mm -hmm. interior design Mm -hmm. um and then when people don't get it right yeah it's like bruh you know i could have just done this by myself yeah but then I can't. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah so. Did you seek therapy? Did you go for counseling? Anything like that? Yes, I've done. We did uh, therapy. Mm-hmm. But not really. I didn't. So I remember when I went to see the doctor. And I'll, I know it'll sound very weird. Mm-hmm. But I think my whole life has been building up to. I've always... I've always just like, and that's why I'll I'll, I'll talk about the case for, mm-hmm. for Casey. Mm-hmm. Um, I think my whole life I've been building up to the fact that I was very okay. I think since even before I bought my bike, I was very okay with the fact that something might happen. That was built in. So you always had it at the back of your mind, like you think something will happen. I know something mm-hmm. will happen. Mm-hmm. I've gone through this whole discussion. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, Royo, if something happens, are you going to be okay with the fact that you might come back not walking? Are you mm-hmm. going to be okay if your hand is gone? Are you going to be okay with this? You get. I do, but I just want to unpack that. Mm. Um, what was it like? Like, I'm trying to understand how you always knew. Like, 
did you know it was going to be physical because of you wanting to be a biker? Like no, that was the most obvious, mm-hmm. but also there've been a lot of like cuz before like I'd, I was before I'd done like aviation, I was a pilot. Like there's a okay. lot of like my and a lot of times um at that particular time I depended on my body mm-hmm. to do quite a lot. So mm-hmm. you also get aware. Mm-hmm. Oh, something's happening. Yeah. Um, and I read a lot, mm-hmm. like about other people. Study a lot because I, I always believe history will keep on repeating itself. So, and like I'm, before, when I was way younger, I was a bit. Um, I used to like burn myself, cut myself. Like I had my own okay. issues. Mm-hmm. So, and I was always I kept on asking God for the longest time that oh I wonder how it be to, to live life without pain. Mm-hmm. Okay? Yeah. And then the irony is that it happened and it's not at so I used to ask whether I'd not be able to feel pain. So mm-hmm. no on this arm I can't feel pain. Mm-hmm. So most of the injuries that you're seeing now yeah these are post my accident. Oh. Cuz I hit it, I bang it, I cook it. I I don't feel like yeah. I've, I've had like my hand fully like, yeah. traumatized mm-hmm. without me realizing it's burned. Like it's because it's not connected yeah. fully to yeah. my brain. So some things have happened. Yeah. So that's why I'm saying I think I think to a way mm-hmm. I have like I sort of preconditioned myself slightly more mm-hmm. than I think most people have. And then also. Mm-hmm. In the biker world, yeah. like we we've, we've we had lost people. Yeah, I've seen like this 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 is a a reality, and I think that's also why I used to enjoy my bike so much because um, it was just like the day it it was a very clear and way of knowing that sometimes you just you can go and not come back. Yeah, I know it sounds very weird. It's it's true, but it's. It's for some of us. It's it's a lot more clear. Yeah. Yeah. And did you did you talk to other people, or you said you read um, yeah. stories of other people? Um, how did the experiences of other people who've gone through severe injuries oh. um, help you in your journey? So yeah, I mean they helped me tremendously. Um, like I was gonna give the story for when I was in Cape Town studying in. In, in was it uni? Yeah, it was uni. Uh, UCT. Then we had, so it was a big, like, Kenyan family as such. So we, we were told one of, uh, there's a Kenyan lady who's come. She had a really bad accident. Um, then we went to see her. Turned out it was actually somebody I grew up with. Um, a lady called Kikesi had come uh, from Nairobi. She had had a serious accident. We went to see her. Um, as a as a Kenyan community, so she had had. Uh, she was involved in an accident, and she lost. Basically, her, 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 her mobility from her neck downwards. So, weirdly enough, we had grown up with her. Um, so. And from then on, we kept on coming to see Casey. We'd always go see Casey. We'd always go and see her and say hi and, you know, play with, spend hours with her. And I think also seeing how she was, because you need to meet this girl. Like, she's, uh, she is, she has life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she has life. So talking to her. Yeah, so you, I, I think also it, it made it apparent to me that, it doesn't, all these things, you can lose a lot, but if you don't lose your soul, you get it. Yeah. Um, you can still do stuff. Yeah. And she does a whole lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, we were with her when she was trying to figure out how to learn, how to communicate, how to type. Oh, Because, like, yeah. she'll send you a text, but, mm-hmm. like, yeah. like you, until you meet her, you won't understand, yeah. what, like, how did you do that? Yeah. You know, because mm-hmm. like she, she, and she went through all this, and she's still going through a lot. But yeah. She's still very, um, she's an entrepreneur. Yeah. She's, you know, she's, uh, she's a leader. And that's, I think, 
yeah, also hanging out with people like that and realizing yeah. because I think the more people deceive themselves mm-hmm. that nothing like this can happen to them, yes. the more they they are shocked when it does. Yeah. Good. So mm. I think something that I realized as well is the concept of life completely changes because mm. the accident feels like a moment of pause like god was really really forcing you to pause and reevaluate your life and just figure that out so three questions or just a few questions there um what does life mean to you now what's changed about you aside from the things that you can't do mm. yeah what, what what is life now i think for me now more of life i'm enjoying using being a creative but not actually being a creative. So by that, I mean uh, having to guide others to actually actively push and develop an idea that is in your head mm-hmm. and you have to learn how to translate it to people mm-hmm. and push it, you know, because like um, from co-working to restaurants, yeah, a lot of these things, they're in my head. Get, I yeah. designed uh, the layouts. I, I know what I want out of this place. If it's about the food now, so okay, yeah. I know your story, but they don't. So, okay, what do you do? So, currently, um, I run. So, I've done a couple of businesses, but uh, right now, I'm running a co-working space called the Foundry, which was the first business that I started after my accident, uh, which is a co-working space that we started in 20. 20- 2014 which is actually how we met yes yeah yeah um and then additionally now we have cafe kaya so i'm i'm, I'm just which is a restaurant which is a restaurant yeah. um and then i'm just getting a lot more deeper into into hospitality um before the accident what were you doing before the accident i was doing events um i had an events company events stroke marketing agency that we used to do a some work for a lot of work for we ex, we built like a lot of experiential work here mm-hmm. in Kenya for brands like Safaricom, Philips, Red Bull, uh, quite a lot of brands here. We did a lot of work for them, and I, me personally, I was a photographer. Mm-hmm. Um, um, yeah, so I was a photographer and a marketing consultant before that. So you mentioned that um, the foundry and Cafe Kaya happened after the accident yeah. do you think in the the accident made you more brave in any way more sure of starting yeah. things yeah uh, let's let's put it like this i think my attitude these days is um i've lost i've lost i've lost a lot you get and every day i think that's one of the things that i it sounds very weird i enjoy about having this pain that I still have every day. It just reminds me, like, when I do get those moments where I pause and there's nothing, I do remember that, yo, life has really changed and don't take it for granted. Yeah. And when I'm in a really bad state, I'm always like, you could have lost more. Yeah. You could have lost more. Yeah. You know, like, I, I, I remember, I'm always like, dude, I could have lost my leg as well. I could have, there's so much more which could have happened. Yeah. You get, and it didn't. And since that didn't happen, there's a reason you're here. Mm. Yeah. And how do your children, what do, you, do you, your children think about your hand? How do they understand? So for Kaya, Kaya is my oldest daughter. Mm-hmm. So she was three when it happened. So she's the only one who actually saw me with my hand. Mm-hmm. The rest of them, they don't really understand why I can't use Um. I think the most one, the one who's most intrigued about my hand is Senna. Um, so she will always try and get me to hold things with this hand. Mm-hmm. Oh, you get? Yeah. She's like, Daddy, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, not that. Mm-hmm. Like she'll, she'll try. Yeah. But it's hard for me to explain to her. She's, she's, mm-hmm. she's, she's five. Yeah. So it's, it's harder. The, the, everybody else seems to understand. Mm-hmm. Just, um, she, she, she pushes. Yeah. Okay. What is one thing people don't know about being disabled? So I think being disabled is ver- like disability is classes. Can I, can I put it like that? Um, <clears throat> there's, there's very many different parameters of it. There's people who 
there's even yeah. though you're disabled like like i said non visible ones especially people like like ni suko sawa there's that and then there's also the aspects of like for and I've, so like i've um cuz i interact with a lot of people i'm very i'm a social butterfly um so you find people who have similar situations but in the work environment people don't consider it as being disabled so yes they're strong enough they'll do what needs to be done but it's like there's no understanding of the fact that there's some it's like if there's a friend of mine who's like a full on waiter mm-hmm. and she has the same thing so you can imagine like she in it, and there's there's n- like no way to identify them yeah as such mm-hmm. um should i say this story there's a place i go to mm mm-hmm. where they they hire deaf um d- uh like deaf staff and so <clears throat> like the other day we had a discussion with I was like telling the one I think maybe cuz even when I went I didn't know I didn't know so it wasn't like they identified that aspect of it being there mm-hmm. so I didn't know so this guy was packing my stuff and I'm talking to him but he's obviously he's not he's not listening and me myself I was like oh then I was like me I'm patient so I'll be like yeah it's okay I can finish and then one of the other guys was like oh Oh yes, Kiangi. Okay. Okay, but then yeah. I was like I, if I knew that maybe I would have already because I feel like I feel that there's one aspect about this like if you once people if somebody doesn't know you have this issue and then they do so it can be very dehumanizing. Yeah. You get. Yeah. And that's what people don't seem to to grasp as well. Yeah. and that's the hard thing it's like you don't want to say that cuz like even with me I'll hide my hand you get I'll yeah. hand, there's numerous situations like I've been with people who miss when I jump can I go find like I've been like I've been like somebody knows you for like 3 4 yeah. years 5 years even mm-hmm. you know what happened when yeah ah. I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know. I yeah, didn't know yeah. it doesn't. I thought it came back. Yeah. You know those kind of things but like they've put you in a situation where you're like um I can't really do that. Mm-hmm. And it, and but, but then they're, they're like looking at you like do you, do so you do. do yeah. you think we should have a sign like yeah. or a symbol something that you can wear that So I mean uh, like that's why I like the like the disabled sign thing. Mm-hmm. Um cuz like when i do need to or a card mm-hmm. the cards are also useful um and that's why i got a card even though i haven't renewed it mm-hmm. i just have it mm-hmm. because there's so many situations that be in where i'm trying to explain this to a cop yeah you get why you can't do something mm-hmm. or why they can't like just shika you on that side like yeah. you know yeah um and they don't understand why you're making a big fuss of it mm-hmm. yeah and i would assume like flying for example like actually f- flying or um, flying is one of the easier places because mm-hmm. once i just tell somebody that my luggage was handled and also i i don't know i think for me i i work like i work with my disability not the other way around mm-hmm. like i make sure i preplan like if you see how i do things mm-hmm. I'm like i i have a sleeve bag i I I know things that on on this side of my pocket like I do preplan everything. Mm-hmm. If I don't have to carry clothes I won't carry clothes. Mm-hmm. Get, yeah. You can buy clothes on the other side. I will just so that I have less things to carry mm-hmm. and worry about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So and then the other thing mm-hmm. so what I'll say is for people who are with you. Mm-hmm. Okay? And this is one thing 10 years in you realize it's good to have confidence it's good to be strong but at the same time you will reach you will have points where like 
either your family or family members, they forget you're disabled yourself. They forget. So there's some things you might need assistance with and you find you just, you, they've forgotten. Yeah. But it's also, uh, it's the cost of also being so um, like self-dependent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So there's times, yes, I'll be like, I really needed help with something, but like, it's like they've forgotten. So is it easy for you to remind them? Sometimes I just, I just brush it off. Mm-hmm. Yes, I'll have, uh, I'll, there, there, yeah, I mean, there, there are times I'll be like, oh, yeah, like this, they, yeah. Yeah, so you remind them, but you don't catch a feeling. About I don't, there are times I won't remind me, I won't lie to you, there's days I've just sat there with my shoes mm-hmm. and a shoeless, mm-hmm. and I have tried to figure out how to do what yeah. to do. You get, mm. or I've had to go back and change my shoes, mm-hmm. just because something happened. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you celebrate your anniversary? Yeah, I celebrate it all the time. Mm-hmm. Every freaking time I celebrate it because for me, it means a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I always tell people I had that was my previous life before mm. 2013. That yeah. Was my previous life. This is my life right now, because there's a lot I had to do. I had to change. I used to, like like I said, driving manual cars, gone. Dressing, for example. Yeah. I was a guy, I can't even dress in a polo. Mm-hmm. A short polo. Mm-hmm. You'll always see me long-sleeved. Mm. So my whole dress code changed yeah. completely. Yeah. Uh, shoes. Because of the scars? or One, my hand is really small. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Now, mm-hmm. it's way smaller. And... I just don't like scrutiny. I just don't mm. like... I, the, initially, from yeah. the get-go, because of this whole thing of like my hand banging on things, I, I didn't... Because I don't know where my hand is. Mm-hmm. And I can't feel it. Yeah. So, like I said, I've, I've cooked it. Yeah. I've cut it. Mm-hmm. Like, so I used to... My, I had a glove that I used to wear so that the glove gets damaged yeah. by my hand. Yeah. But then the number of times like people used to stop me and just be like, so, what yeah. you And I was like, ah, brah. Yeah. But then at the same time, talking about invisible disabilities or like non visible, when I had the glove, when I'm at the supermarket or somewhere, people, I didn't have to say yeah. that I need help mm-hmm. with this. Mm-hmm. You get Because mm-hmm. people would assume my hand is plastic. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. Nowadays, mm-hmm. I have to actually say yeah. when I need help. Because yeah. a lot of times you can go somewhere, somebody gives you a box. And you're like, so <laughs> baby. I'm like, look at the guy. I'm like, yeah. so, sorry, I can't actually yeah. do this. Or mm-hmm. like the one, the one which is the best, one of the best ones is sometimes you just like, you go to the mall, the parkings are completely full. Or maybe they have like three or four disabled parkings. So mm-hmm. you, you park in the disabled parking. Yeah. Um, then the guy comes to you and says, "Well, I'm disabled, happy." Wow, that's when I, I, I like, I really yeah. uh, start to riot to those, because mm-hmm. um, I'm, I'm not doing it necessarily for me. Yeah, I'm just like, yo, if there was, even if there was a fully, why are you disturbing? Now? Yeah, why are you? Why and are you in the face? Yeah. do you have a dis- disability card? Yeah. Uh, what's that process like? What was that process like of getting it? Uh, do you remember? I do. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just been long. And it's a bit... Let's just put it like this. Me, I, I think I got it once and I never renewed it. Mm-hmm. Because, yo, it's a bit... You have to go to the government hospital. You have to sit there. And me, first of all, I went... I asked. They gave me the paperwork. I went there. Every other week, oh, kumeja kuja another day. And I did this, and I did this, and I did this every morning. And then when the doc saw me, and he looked at, the, and you know, the lady at the front was like, "You need this paperwork." I had to go for that test again. Mm-hmm. I had so many things that they, they required out of me. The doc saw me. He's like, "Dude, you have a severe brachial plexus." Well, that has been more of a kuja apa, because he knows, like, yeah, it can, it's a given. It's a given. Yeah, but then the fact that you have to go and do this yearly. Yeah. Oh, it's yearly? Yearly. 
Wow. It's yearly. Mm-hmm. Then take your papers to KRA. Then take your papers to... Mm-hmm. No, first take them to disability place. Then take them to KRA and yeah. all other places. Yearly, I, there's already, I think, and yeah, I'm talking on behalf of other disabled people. Yeah. I'm like, I think it, life is already difficult enough mm-hmm. that... I don't think people should make it more difficult. Yeah. But at the same time, I do understand the GAVA has to make sure yeah. that you're actually disabled. Yes. And uh, that's the cash 22. Yeah. I think it makes sense, especially yeah. for for things that uh, would take long to heal, mm. to have like um, a set time. Like mm. you come back after three years. Yeah. You come back after, you know. Yeah. Yeah. They should, yeah. they should be able to separate the two. I mean, like, if a guy is blind, but... Yeah. Oh, you, you've yeah. chopped your, Like, I have friends who their leg is yeah. gone. And they yeah, still have yeah. to go through this process of yeah. having to go and verify every year yeah. that their leg is gone. Mm-hmm. Like, do you really have to? Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, there should be, a, like, a, a faster queue mm-hmm. for some things mm-hmm. which are permanent. Yeah. And then there's some for, like, maybe disabilities which might heal mm-hmm. or things like that. Cause, yeah. Um, yeah. I think. That's yeah. Right. yeah. And did anything good come out of yeah. that terrible experience? Oh, a lot. Mm-hmm. A lot, a lot. I have a very different uh, way of looking at life. Yeah. Um, I think it just solidified a lot of things that I used to think of, but didn't commit fully to. And um, yeah, so a lot. I mean, like I said, now I'm fully in hospitality. Before I was mostly in media and events i a lot of the things i do now i do for myself i don't so i moved from being doing things for clients to doing things for myself Mm -hmm. uh, which has been mm, it's been um it's been a very interesting um path Mm -hmm. a lot harder but i think a lot more Rewarding. Rewarding. Yeah. Internally. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And uh, with that, I can plan a lot easier because mm-hmm. it's just me. Yeah. It's just me and my team. Mm-hmm. And we plan like that. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, we are affected by other things, but like we can plan by ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And now a parting shot. Um, are there any practical tips or advice you've learned along the way mm-hmm. that you, that you think may be useful to other people who are just getting into who are just getting disabled, newly disabled or... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like now, especially, I mean, like I've been... So I'll say this. I have noticed that there's a lot more of also my friends who are getting... Because these days it's just easy. It's, it's a slight accident on a border. You're just going somewhere. That's how simple it is. It's not that you, you are a crazy rally driver. Yeah. Uh, you jumped off a cliff. That's what you used to do. No, mm-hmm. this is just simple, guys just living simple life. Yeah. And I always say, because <clears throat> I had a discussion with somebody the other day and then they were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think about this and that? And I was like, you know what? This might not be my only other disability in my yeah. life because me, me, I'm living my life 100%. Mm-hmm. You get mm-hmm. it. doesn't mean that this will be the only one. I might even get another one. Yeah. And you have to be very clear about yeah. that. Like, don't assume, okay, sorry, me fanyi wa. Yeah. I'm okay. I've been given mine. Mm-hmm. And I can move, even mm-hmm. for the guys who have it. Because mm-hmm. that's another thing that people have to be quite conscious about. Just because you're suffering doesn't mean it can't get worse. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us. Um, thanks for watching this episode. Please subscribe and join the mailing list. The show notes are down below. And we will catch you in the next episode. <laughs>